Next, I want to talk about a practical use for prototypes. I want to talk about a way that we can use the prototype property in order to add something, add some functionality to an existing object. So as my example, I'm going to use the array object. In my code here, I've got a very basic array with six strings in it, and I'm calling the built-in method sort. Now this method, the way it works, is it will change the array in place. And what that means is it changes the original one. I'm putting the result. It's also going to give me back the array. So I've got the variable sorted and the variable names. Names is the original, sorted is the one that's taking the output from this. Both of them are going to output the exact same thing. So I'm taking this array and I'm sorting it. It gives me back a copy of the array, or it gives me back the original array, and it has modified the original array as well. Now with the array itself, I can't say that I want to do something like this. I can't do array dot abc equals function. It just won't let me do that. I cannot modify the array object itself. But what I can do is I can go to the prototype of the array and I can add a method which will then apply to all arrays. So if I had, let's say, a JavaScript file called utilities and inside there I added the array prototype method that I'm about to create called shuffle, if I put that inside this other file, I can include that file in all of my websites and I will have the ability with any array to carry out this piece of functionality. So something that arrays don't have, they don't have a method called shuffle. You can't call a method to randomize the order of the elements inside the array. The way I'm going to do that is with array. I'm going to talk to to its prototype, and I'm going to create something called shuffle. That is going to be this function right here. So I am now adding a piece of functionality called shuffle to every array that I will use in this file. My function, what I want to do is I'm going to take the whole array and I'm going to loop through each of the elements so this would be number 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. And as I go through my loop, I'm going to take position 0 the first time through, then position 1, then position 2. So 0 the first time, and I'm going to trade it with a randomly selected one from the array. So I've got six elements in my array, which means I will loop six times, and each time I will take my current index and I will swap it with a random one. So that will give me somewhat of a shuffle. Alright, so let's create a variable here for the length, because I'm going to be using that value. And inside this function, I can use the keyword this. Because I'm dealing with the prototype, this is method is actually going to be called on an array. Let's say down here I wanted to take my names array and call shuffle. That's how I would do it, like this. And shuffle is going to run this function, and the keyword this is going to point to this. Whatever is in front of this, the shuffle method, this will point to this. This is the context for this thing running. Inside this function, anywhere I use this, it's going to point to this. Now I have to use the old standard functions. I can't use arrow functions. Arrow functions will change the context of how this runs, and I won't be able to use this to refer to my original array. So this has to be the keyword function here. I have to use the old style functions. I'm going to use a for loop, as long as i is less than the length. There we are. When I'm done, what I'm going to do, I've decided I'm not going to change the array in place. I'm going to return a copy here. So let shuffled equal that. So I'm returning copy to be put inside of here. All right, inside the loop, let's grab my current element. 
I want to get the string value of it. Uh, this sub i. There we go. And this sub i will select from the array one of those elements. I'm going to do an empty string concatenated with this because that will take a new value, so I'm not using the original array. I'm going to pick a random position, so simple math.floor math.random times the length of the array. That will give me a random value between 0 and 5 for my six elements. And I want to get this sub POS. That was my random position. And I'm going to then go back to the first one here, this sub i, and I'm going to set that equal to whatever I selected from the random one. And then inside the positioned one, the randomly selected one, I'm going to take temp, which was my value for the position, whether it's position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've switched places for those two strings. Save that, and then we can just console.log, or I've got my shortcut up above, shuffled, save, and run. And there we go. So the first one ended up being in the same position. The last one ended up being in the same position, but these are switched, these are switched, these are switched, these are switched. If I run this again, I should end up with a different order. And I do. Cyril, Sterling, Cheryl, Merrily, Mallory, Lana, and Pam. There we go. And each time I run this, I get a brand new order. And the cool thing about this is, because I'm returning this from this method, what is this? It's my array. So if names.shuffle returns an array, I can call shuffle again and again and again because chaining them together works because this is an array, this is an array, this is an array. I can keep going as many times as I want. Now, I'm not really seeing much of a difference shuffling once, shuffling a thousand times, there's only so many combinations I'm going to get with six strings. But we have the ability here, because I'm returning the array, that I can continue shuffling them like this. And that is a practical example of how you would use the prototype property on an existing object to add functionality. This is something that used to be done 15, 20 years ago quite a bit back before the string object had a lot of the features that it has now. There, there was no trim right, trim left, trim, uh, no pad functions, so people would write their own extensions to the objects like this. They go string.prototype.trim and that would be a function that would trim off the empty space on either side. Okay, hope that uh, helps you. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments and as always thanks for watching.